Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's uh, broadcast. It is such a time that our nation has come to a place where the voice of God is truly needed in our nation. We are finding it difficult to get the voice of God from the men and women that are trusted with that responsibility in our days and in our season. In our generation, we have an occurrence that is too uh, uh, complex for many of the preachers of our day. It has become very difficult for many of them to open their mouths and muzzled, especially because of the things that they have been able to uh, take and receive from the offices that are established in the land. It has been difficult for many uh, prophets and pastors to speak out in this period of electioneering because many of them have been compromised because of the things that cunningly people in leadership have been able to throw at them to give unto them and to cause them to fail to have the voice that they should have it is sad for our day it is sad for our nation when the guidance that is supposed to come from the leaders of the church is not coming through i'll speak uh, for a few minutes and to us as I give you a few things that God has deposited in me and uh, as I also speak for the guidance of those who are seeking for guidance in the land we are the church of Jesus Christ which is completely different from the religious setups that we have I do not seek to be a religious leader at all because I'm not one. I will never be one and I was not called to be one. I am called to be the voice of God in my generation and to speak without missing words what God is saying. Before the, the 8th of August, I spoke by the word of God and when many prophets and ministers of the gospel were pulling towards either Jubilee or NASA, the Lord God visited me and asked me whether I could really tell his voice if he was to tell me that the president would be from NASA or Jubilee. God visited me and asked me, Will I be able to hear his voice or will I be carried by the tribal demons that are carrying other ministers of the gospel in this period? And that question really pushed me back and I began to meditate and think seriously about what God is saying to our nation. And the Lord spoke to me and told me clearly that the August 8th election will not give us a president. I spoke it here and many people reprimanded me, uh, cast me and called me names. But it came to pass that the August 8th election didn't give us a president. Those elections were after a few days nullified by the Supreme Court. After that nullification, the Lord spoke to me again and I came back to this channel and I spoke by the word of the Lord that even the forthcoming election, which was to be on 17th of October, it is not going to give us a president. And it happened that election was postponed never took place. Then God spoke to me again concerning the 26th election and said that the 26th election is not going to give us an outright president. I know 
that every one of you knows what that means. It is what we have right now. But before then, in January this year, God had spoken to me and said, if the nation is not going to pray, then we are going to have a situation that will force the armed forces to save the situation. As we speak now, everything that God spoke to me has been fulfilled. Exactly what we are seeing now, many people are not understanding what is going on in the land today. God has spoken to me before the uh, swearing in of the president and I saw the president and he was receiving advices from many people whom he refused to give heed to until a group of three men came to him and told him the solution here is for you to be sworn in and for the first time he gave heed to those three men when he gave heed to them it looked like it is the only option but after I saw what is going to happen after that swearing in. And that is what I want to share with us today. We are looking at a situation where things seem to be okay. As I prophesied a few days, a few uh, weeks ago, that we are going to have a temporal calm in the land. And for sure, we have been having that temporal calm from the 26th. I remember I spoke that on 25th of this month, of last month, November. God said there shall be a temporal calm, and that is exactly what we have today. It is a temporal calm. It is not peace. It is just tranquility. I'm speaking from the Lord, not from the political divides that we have. Then God showed me that after that temporal period of calmness, Kenya is going to enter into a dark day. Maybe you may not understand what that means. But ultimately, what God is going to do is to save this nation from the greedy politicians that we have and he is going to give this nation into the hands of an entity that is going to usher in the Kenya that can take revival to the ends of the world. God said he is going to do this for the sake of his word that went forth in Kenya, that Kenya is going to be the lighthouse of the gospel in the end times. The setup as it is today, on one side we have several tribes, on the other side several tribes who are very antagonistic and it is not possible for either side to cause the nation to come together. It is something that is so difficult right now as we speak to pull together the divided nation. But God has a way that he is going to use. And at the end, it will not be jubilee rejoicing over NASA or NASA rejoicing over jubilee. There is something that Kenya has not seen, but is coming unto us. We are going to find ourselves in a place where everybody that prays will pray honestly and honestly unto God and God will hear the cry of this nation and God will bring out a people who are not tribal, who are not so drunk in the tribal opium that is being dished out by politicians 
and by religious leaders. Religious leaders who cannot hear from God, they have gone out and they are looking for where the bet is better. And they are speaking the language of some politicians who are oiling their pockets. I want to warn you, men of the cloth, I want to warn you, preacher, be you a bishop, a prophet, a apostle, a teacher of the word, or a pastor. You have taken to yourself to listen to your political masters more than to your heavenly master. And you know in your heart that you are only pursuing a partisan agenda of those who are paying you the 30 pieces of silver. It will be coming upon you swiftly the judgment and the hand of God. The one that you have mocked to go out and receive money to deceive leaders and to strengthen those who you should not have strengthened. The hour has come for reckoning and for sure you shall hear the voice of the one that you thought does not speak. The one who called you, the one that you have made yourself deaf to, is going to call from his holy mountain and you shall by force answer that call. As you do, you shall give an account of all that you have done in this period when evil comes upon the man that is in the city and you as the watchman you refused to give the warning you didn't sound the warning and so the man in the city will perish in a sin but his blood shall be required from your hand you thought it was it was classical you thought it was good you thought it was cool and it was fashionable to align with your tribesmen and you have aligned and you have lied to the church that god has given us a leader now it is days before God begin to do his work in this nation. What will you do? Where will you turn to? Because God is going to pass through Kenya. And Kenya will get into a dark place. Thanks to those who have been prophesying good and peace. You are doing well. You are prophesying good when there is trouble in the land. It is okay because those who hear you applaud you. They give you a round of applause. They are happy because you have become their soothsayer. But God, who loves the church in Kenya, will purge this nation, will visit us as a country, and he will remove from the nation those things that cause stumbling to his children. It is a pity when preachers have agreed with those who worship things, those who worship the mountains and the rivers and the lakes, and you have allowed them to prophesy upon your altars, they have defiled the altar of God in the land. When God will come and pass through the land, for judgment it will begin in the house of God pastors have worshipped bowed down to gods of Mount Kenya 
for fear that they may be called traitors. Pastors are bowed to the gods of the Lake Victoria because they wanted to seem to be on the same side with their people. But God has prepared this nation for revival. And that revival is coming and it will not be brought about by who feels that they are winning or by those who feels that they are losing. Hereafter, a few days from now, both sides of the divide will rise up. They will cause the nation to spin. But at the height of that spinning, the hand of God will come upon the nation of Kenya. And a new order shall be birthed in this nation. The revival that must come cannot come when people are thinking, I am a Kikuyu first. When people are thinking, I am a Luo first. Or I am a Kamba or Luya or Kalenji or Maasai or any other tribe for that matter. Revival is coming the day that you as a Kikuyu will find your place in God and hold the hand of a Luo and not feel like you are holding the hand of a di different tribe but feel that you are holding the hand of your true brother. Men and women of God, the one who called us is regretting that he raised early at our time. And early is unable to speak for he has grown fat and weight has increased upon him. His eyes are dim. And Samuel is too young to be listened to. But the hour has come. And the hour is when God will move in this nation in a poor way. The swearing in of the president is not an end. There is a lot that is coming. How many people in the church can pray right? The preachers are comforting even the president and he thinks that they hear from God. But many of them hear from his money. They don't hear from God. They hear from his gold. And so, as the nation finds itself getting to a place where it was not prepared for, you men of God, will answer before God. You will hear his voice clearly. You will run to hide, but it will be too late. But the church of Jesus Christ hears his voice. It has not been turned away. And those who have gone slightly away, they shall come back for the voice of God shall be extremely clear and the Lord shall gather his children together the same way he will gather them on the day of rapture the same trumpet they shall hear 
that time, even now, they are hearing the voice of God. Kenya, don't listen to the prophets who are prophesying from their own heart. For they have not been sent by me, says the Lord. Hear the voice of God. Repent and be ye converted. Change your heart. Stop listening to the tribal demons which are carrying your fellow brethren. Listen to me, says the Lord, and you shall hear my voice clearly, and I shall heal your land, and I shall give you leaders after my own heart who are going to lead you into the revival that I promised days ago. This is the voice of God unto you, Kenya. You have waited for far too long. You have been confused by those who came in my name. But I speak unto you now. Hear my voice. You shall not be consumed, but you shall be saved even though your salvation will come from unlikely quarters. But I will save you. I will give you true peace. And I will cause you to come to the place of my calling. I will cause you to come to the place where my word shall go forth in power, signs and wonders and miracles await you, O Kenya. You shall be guided into the land of revival, into the place that I prepared for you before the foundations of the world were laid. Shun tribal callings and come back unto me says the lord repent and rent your heart and not your clothes sprinkle yourself with ashes but not upon your physical body but upon the tablets of your heart Allow my spirit to move in you and to guide you. For I have come to bless you and to bless your land and to heal your land and to save you and purge you a people unto myself. I will refine you upon my furnace and you shall come forth as silver and as pure gold, for I shall refine you myself, says the Lord, and I will give unto you a future you expected for a long time. Kenya, get out of them, all my people, for I shall punish the land, and the sword shall pass through the land, but I will spare you, my people. I will pick you, my people. My spirit shall speak in your heart, and you shall be called out of them, and tribalism shall not get hold of those who came from me, says the Lord. I have a remnant in this land. I have people who hear my voice in this nation of Kenya. I will spare you the tribulation. I will spare you the anguish. I will bring peace for your sake, but not by your political parties, 
and not by your tribal groupings. I will raise a deliverer for you. And this nation shall be guided as one people. A people united not by the powers of the sword, but by the power of my spirit, says the Lord. Church, arise. Arise. Arise united. Break the barriers and the walls of your tribes. Break them yourself. I will not break them for you, says the Lord. You will go and break your tribal walls and barriers. You know what I have been speaking in your hearts. Embrace your fellow men who belong to the tribe of Judah, who I have washed by my blood, and do not dis discriminate them on the basis of of their ethnic extraction on the basis of where they come from. Open your heart for your fellow believers. I have men and women in this nation and I am pulling you together. Don't frustrate my grace. Don't frustrate my grace or my children. Don't frustrate my grace. All oh, my children, receive my grace and come together. Let power come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Rekosibro Hopahanshadana, Zekoshikotidaga, Deklolikantolosokrana, Kenya Kaziko Sapiita, Mesobo Hoshatenaza. In Jesus' mighty name, Kenya, O oh Kenya, may favor be found. Father God, we worship you. Father God, we pray unto thee. Remember mercy, our God, our nation has seen. We have seen, we have come short of your glory. I have seen and my people have seen. I pray that you forgive me. Anything that went wrong, anything that was said wrong, it is because I said it wrong. It is because I didn't speak out in time. It is because I didn't caution in time. I pray that you forgive me, oh God, as one man. For Forgive my nation as though it was one man. Forgive my nation as though it was one person. Forgive my, my, my fellow pastors as though it is me, O sin, and O came short of your glory. I pray that you forgive us, O God, and I pray that you raise us up as a people that can hear from you. Thank you, Lord, for retaining a remnant for us. Thank you because our nation will not be consumed because your remnant is here. I release your people as they begin to pray and confess their sin. Hear their cry. Forgive us, O oh God, and wash us clean. And give us that new order that my God and my Father, we may move into it and see true revival in this nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your done it to your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. God bless you, child of God, and do you well. Remember to pray for this nation. It is not yet over. There is two more things remaining to happen in this nation, and then the nation will enter into its rest, into its Sabbath. We are going towards a Sabbath. For the nation pray for this country don't put your trust in the politicians don't put your trust in the president Uru Kenyatta or in the opposition leader Raila Odinga put your trust and your faith in God listen to him keenly and carefully and he shall guide you you are blessed
you are blessed. I love you. I know that God will do it for us. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.